What's going on everyone, Talon back here, and today I thought we'd do a little bit of a discussion video before Frieza arrives. Now if you don't know what I'm talking about real quick, let's go through a, back th a few days, give or take, or technically about a week or two when the magazine itself was released. But we have been given the information about what is the next category leader, you know, the next big guy who's going to be coming out, and it's going to be Golden Angel Frieza. It is, you know, obviously capitalizing on the fact of what Dragon Ball Super has been doing with him, and the fact that he's very popular and everything, and he is technically the first villain that is not part of a dual uh summons you know area that they've been doing so they so we had omega and super saiyan 4 gogeta which you know they're kind of a pair in, in themselves basically but frieza himself though he's coming by himself and so this starts to make the mark of you know like what they did with the 120 percent leaders you know we had super saiyan 4 goku and vegeta and they were popular obviously super saiyan 3 angel goku was popular sorry global i know that's still a bit of a stingy spot right now but then even having like uh into gogeta super saiyan 3 gotenks you know heroes are always popular and everything Villains, on the other hand, not so much. However, Frieza may be the balance between those two right there because, yes, he is a villain card, but at the same time, Frieza's pretty popular among, well, everybody, basically, right? So it'd be interesting to see what they could do to really make this guy stand out. You know, they can't just do the, you know, I, I imagine they'll probably be a Sailor Two of Stones, maybe, essentially, or even just one. But overall, they have to make Frieza appealing, right? It's like, why pull him over these guys? Why pull a villain card over a, you know, a hero card, essentially, right? But we're not in the realm, the realm of the heroes and the villain cards anymore. We're in the realm of categories. And so I wanted to kind of take this opportunity to kind of talk about a couple of things that I personally think Frieza could potentially give in terms of a category leader and then also maybe his passive skill, and then also potentially what will not be the category skill. Because I still feel that sometimes people still think that category leader skills uh, are somehow tied to links or something like that. And that is so far not been the case, right? Fusions technically, I guess you could count one, but overall, so far out of the categories, there is no links that are like that, to my knowledge at least. I think, again, I guess I could, you could maybe look at something like the World Tournament uh, category compared to its link, but let's face it, no one builds a team around the World Tournament category uh, link itself, and I'm gonna get some people confused by saying category link and link category. Okay, bottom line, categories are categories, links are links, so let's just keep going with that. But anyway, first off, let's go ahead and take a look at what free when Frieza is coming. He is most likely coming this upcoming week on Thursday, most likely. Everything in the banners are basically ending by the end of maybe Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday time. And so by that time, you have to have something new, right? We just had the double rates banner. We're not getting an LR banner to our knowledge. And so this must mean that the Frieza is coming. Now, if you remember back on the article and everything, and hopefully I'll have a picture up if I remember to actually put it up and everything, is that it is, it said, it translated, when you translated the kanji and everything, it said at the end of Kugatsu. And Kugatsu means September. So that is coming up real fast. So it'll be interesting to see just, you know, how long he might stick around for. And this basically is kind of, they're kind of doing the same thing with Global right now. You guys are getting two, maybe two weeks at most with some kind of uh, certain banner. And then you get the next one and we're kind of doing the same thing right now. Except we throw in a double race banner just kind of in the middle. But anyway, so we know that he's coming obviously next week. But then the big question is, okay, what's his category? What's his passive? And what is all this other, you know, what is he going to do? Like, why go for him again? And so, first off, let's look at his leader skill, okay? First off, I don't think he's going to be, you know, like the strong... Something that's similar to the strongest clan in space. You know, like the, the Frieza uh, category, essentially, right? Or the race of Frieza's category. That is very limiting. Now, you might argue that, yes, you know, things like the fusion, you know, the fusion category, the dragon category, the half... Well, technically, the half sand category is by no means a uh, shallow category right there. And it's technically not half sand. It is... Uh, hybrid sands give or take but nonetheless it was you know when looking at something myself i'm like okay what do you have you have king cold you have cooler you have frieza you have frost and then you have i think it's chilled the one who's the uh the one from like the bardock story or whatever that's five characters that's not many that really is not that many so i really don't see that happening in terms of a category skill he'll have that link and i have a feeling that maybe someone like physical cooler might be able to slip into that category 
But, or another Golden Frieza, the more I think about it, because technically Golden Frieza and Angel Golden Frieza, they are technically different, so you can have them on the same team, unless, of course, they just program it so that you can only have one on the team, but, you know, we'll get into that in a second later. But, you know, so there's going to be, they're going to have to find, you know, they'll have that link, especially, to go with Cooler, right? Because, I mean, Cooler's the only other one that you'd really want to run, maybe besides another Golden Frieza or a full-powered Frieza. So, again, they could do that team as a category, but the way I look at it is that, again, that's very limiting. And they have to somewhat make this, you know, you have to make it appealable to us of to say, hey, actually spend your stones on this guy, summon for this guy. And so, I don't think they're going to have that. Now, another thing that I've also been seeing when it comes to what his potential leader skill is going to be is going to be something like, you know, uh, the, the, the big bad, like, kind of like a big bad bosses type category, which... I could technically see that. I could see something similar to that. Or something along the lines of, you know, like the final boss, like from each arc. Um, which, again, though, that's very limiting on what he could be there, right there. So, my thoughts are going to be, uh, my first thought at least, in terms of his leader skill. I'm just going off the category skill. I haven't even touched the passive skill first. But the first thing I want to think about when it comes to his leader skill is maybe something ar revolving ar around the lines of aliens. Right, right. So not, so, you know, not someone from Earth. So you could take out, you know, your Red Ribbon Army type of guys. I'm just giving a basic example here. Or King Piccolo. Although technically he is from Namek, so maybe he could be in it. But I'm thinking that maybe he he's going to have a category skill that is relatable to any other race within the Dragon Ball universe. And if you want to even throw in different universes, granted we've only had universe 6 in the game so far, but obviously we know there are other ones, then maybe he's got something like that, you know? So you could throw in, you could throw in Beerus, you could throw in Whis. They are not from planet Earth, right? So maybe something like that, you know? I could e easily see it saying uh, Uchuchin, which means uh, alien in Japanese. So if it was a category like that, you could throw in Beerus, you could throw in Whis, you could throw in the entire Frieza clan, essentially. You could throw in a Namekian, you know, throw in your LR Piccolo right there. You know, and you could throw in others. Technically, you would be able to throw in Sansu. They would, I don't know how, how far they would limit it and everything, but that would technically allow you to throw in a Goku and Vegeta right there. So that'd be kind of a mix right there. And honestly, that, I know what I think, but that'd be actually kind of cool. Again, I have no idea if this is going to happen. This is my personal thoughts on this. You can easily disagree with me if you want to. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments as always. But I think that'd be pretty cool. Some kind of like, you know, extraterrestrial kind of leader skill or something like that. So I think that'd be pretty cool. Um, maybe the second one be kind of like more around just kind of the Dragon Ball Super era, right? Because we have something like that with the Dragon Arc GT, even though technically it is not fully the GT Arc because Super Saiyan 3 Kid Goku never appeared in the Dragon Arc, but for some reason he's in it. I think it's just because of the card and everything. But nonetheless, uh, they could do something like kind of like a Dragon Ball Super type arc. Um, but obviously, every, anywhere between uh, the Resurrection F movie all the way until now. So it could be something in there. So you could also be adding in the Universe 6 characters, including Hit and Kaba and all that stuff. But again, it's kind of hard to say if that would do it. Um, you know, again, you could throw in Beerus and Whis and everything because they are from there. Uh, but that would be kind of more of the smaller one. Um, but then <clears throat> it's really hard to say what they want to do with that. So, And then on top of the third one that I'm potentially thinking of, it's going kind of more back towards the big bad bosses type of thing, but not necessarily all those characters. I'm, I'm going to say like, you know, because there, you know, there are definitely some characters in here that, you know, they have big bad bosses, but, you know, they weren't the biggest of the bad or anything like that. Um, and some of those are given to the GT characters, something like that. So maybe they restrict it to only the main storyline, or you know, only a Z and Super, but not GT or something like that. Because then you'd be throwing in like the Omega. You could throw Omega. You could throw in Cooler. You could throw in Frieza. You know, you'd be throwing all these big bads. So if they decide to limit it, at least now, give or take, though, you have to also remember that if they do something like the Dragon Ball Super arc, you could throw in LR Goku Black. You know, the LR Goku Rose and the Zamas combination there. You could have him in there, right? So it'd be interesting to see if they do more of the big bad bosses route, you could throw in some like LR Brawly, but then again, you know, again, this is, again, they don't rely on the links or anything, but Brawly's never had big bad bosses. So it'd be interesting to see if they ever threw someone in, something in there like that. But I would imagine though, whatever the leader skill potentially is, it will probably include some of the other summable LRs. Brawly, Goku Black Rose, and then uh, I think those are the only two villain ones, if I remember correctly. Trunks, yeah, I think that's it. So anyway, so that, that could be a potential right there in terms of the category. It, it's just in the end, th there's so many different ways. You know, we personally can think, you know, oh, it could be this category, it could be this category, and this category. 
But then, you know, Agatsuki or Van Dyke is just going to be like, eh, now nah, we're going to do this. Why not? Let's just, you know, throw you a random curveball kind of thing, right? You know, because you know, at the same time, they don't want to make these things too restrictive. But at the same time, they might make it somewhat restrictive so that we have more incentive to actually summon for these guys. So it's really hard to say. Like I said, I am personally waiting for the leader skill. And the more I keep looking at it, I'm just like, I don't personally see myself summoning for this. Because unless you're able to include a lot of these villain cards that either A, a lot of us have, or B, are some of the top tier ones, then... You know, personally, personally for me, I'm not going to go for it. So, I don't know. It'll be really interesting to see what they potentially do. And in terms of, you know, like, what the uh, stat increase will be, it's going to be plus three key, no matter what. That's a pretty that's pretty given right there. <clears throat> but for someone like Frieza, you know, we just had Gohan, who gives the HP and defensive boost, but the, eight, or the attack boost is only 130%, which is only 10% up from your 120% leads. So, I'm thinking to myself, okay, let's see, Frieza... He's powerful, he's, you know, he commands and everything like that. What if he does the plus three key and he gives like the HP and attack, or even just the attack itself up a hundred and say 60 or 70%, and then the HP and the defense is only say 140% or something like that. I'm, I'm gonna say that right now. Again, I actually have no idea if this is the case, but at the same time, you know, hey, I'll take a wild swing at it, and if it happens to be that even close to it, I'll be like, hey, I consider it a victory, so. Now, in terms of what his passive could potentially give, Frieza, for the most part, has always had some kind of defense to him, right? Uh, full power, no, I'm not talking about full power Frieza, I'm talking about Golden Frieza here, okay? So, uh, with the Golden Friezes, except for those ones that, you know, you could take like the uh, SR, STR one, the first form Frieza, farm up all those metals, get him to that Golden Frieza, he's kind of just standing like this type of thing. Then all of a sudden, you know, you have a Golden Frieza. He doesn't have really, he's just had whatever passive skill that original card had, just simply updated essentially. But all of these summonable original base Golden Friezas, except for the in, the Intel one, kind of changed after it's got a Doken Awakening. They all had some kind of defensive value. Now there's again only three of them. <laughs> keep in mind there is the Int one, the Agility one, and the uh, Tech one. The Int one got his defensive boost stat. After he got his Doken Awake, I think he's like 60% or something like that, if I remember correctly. Again, no one really uses him, but nonetheless, it's a decent upgrade, especially if you put him under a 120% leader. Although, let's be frank, no one runs him on the Extreme Int team. So, uh, in terms of the agility one that had the, it has that HP restriction, but the dude is a tank like No Tomorrow. Same with his tech form. He gives both attack and defense at a certain HP. I believe it's 50% again for the tech form. And again, he is a tank as long as you're 50% or above. So a lot of people are thinking, okay, is he going to have that as his passive skill? Now, we all know he's going to have some huge attack boost, right? We, that is a given along, among these leaders. Otherwise, why pull them? The reason this game is still so popular, especially in Japan right now, is the people here, especially the people around and from the Japanese community that live here personally in Japan, they love the aspect of collecting and seeing how hard the person can hit. This is personally why you have not seen the game advance as much as a lot of us would want to, especially from the international community. In terms of the way they look at it here in Japan, you collect, you get stones, you, repeat, you rinse and repeat, and that's how it's done. And you get to test out your power, and you move on to the next guy. That's essentially how it goes. So we know Freeze is going to have some crazy 120%, 100%, 150%, whatever it might be. He's going to have that. In terms of the defensive value, though, he could maybe mitigate damage, maybe like Super 17 or, you know, the uh, Tech LR uh, Goku, Ro uh, Goku Black Rose and everything. He could have something like that. But I don't think they would tie it down to an HP restriction, especially for this kind of lead. But then again, maybe they do because you have that with the Tech Golden Frieza. But the Tech, uh, the 100% stats up leader guys, they no one really pulled for those, right? You know, they, they didn't give the key, so there wasn't much incentive to pull for them. They are still amazing cards, but again, at that time, not many people pulled for them. So it will be interesting to see just if they actually do make a Golden Frieza. I know he's Angel technically and not give him that HP restriction if they give him that huge defensive boost or some kind of damage mitigation value or anything like that. So let me know your thoughts down below in the comments, guys. I'd like to get a conversation going because we've only got, let's see, today's Sunday by the time I'm recording this. So it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at the latest. That's four days at the latest that we will see this new uh, Angel Golden Frieza. Most likely on Tuesday, Japan time, we will get, you know, something from the Bandai Twitter to show off the card himself. And then we'll learn the category and everything by Wednesday, probably, or Thursday. 
and then Thursday evening, Japan time, it's released. So it'll be interesting to see what we get. So let me know your thoughts down below in the comments as always. What do you think his leader skill is going to be? What do you think his passive is going to be? What do you think the category will be and all that good stuff? Uh, because you have to keep in mind that we're going to be getting that strength one that we can farm. And so that will have probably the same category leader skill or something similar to it, I would assume. So we'll have to see exactly what it's going to be. So anyway, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. As always, leave a like if you like the video. Subscribe if you happen to be new. And if you had to be see catching my streams at random times during the weekdays, because or maybe it's like very early for some of you guys, or it's the afternoon, I'm testing out my new streaming schedule still. Hopefully, I have it finished by this weekend, or technically by next weekend, I guess. And then hopefully, we can keep going from there. So anyway, guys, thanks for enjoying the video. As always, until next time, everyone, I will see you in the next one.